Hello, everybody. Good morning and welcome to the United Stand. We've got the latest Manchester United news around Pochettino. Incy's just told you. I told you so. I said Poch three years ago. How you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Yeah, I'm good. Obviously, uh, not a great weekend. Um, but obviously, you know, I think it was one of those that it had to happen after that performance on Saturday. Um, as you said, no one likes to see anyone lose their job, whether it's in management or in, in fucking Tesco's. It, it don't matter, you know what I mean? But I think after the performance and, you know, what, what happened, it, it, it was going to come and um, it's sad, but this is something, we, like any club, we've got to move on. And, you know, everyone's, we're all talking about Pochettino now. But this is the bloke that I mentioned for years ago where I got pelters from, from Mate United fans. Um, and now a few years down the line, we're, 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 we're trying to get back into the club. So, as I say, that was my case. I don't need to say any more. You, well, you will be saying some more because I'll be poking well, you for some more. And I was, and I, I, I was, I was stipulated, and this was nothing against Oli. You know, you talk about one of the biggest clubs in the world, if not the biggest club in the world, has to be by, for me, managed by someone who's an elite manager. You know, and it's, this is not a case of kicking Oli Wise down because I said this for years ago. You know, to have someone in as to, who took Cardiff down, to have someone who's managed Mould, yeah, I, I get for the interim period, but with, under Mourinho, it wasn't great, but so Oli came in and did a job. But to give him the permanent job of the biggest club in the world, to go against Tuchel, to go against Pep, you know, I know Tuchel wasn't there at the time, you know, I mean, to go against Klopp, you know, to deal with his big egos, it, you have to be, a, it's a massive, massive arc. And, you know, I said, that start, go and get Pochettino. Yeah, he hasn't won anything. And people might say, yeah, well, he's not won anything. He's not won anything. But he's been in the Champions League final. We, like, we see the style of football he plays. You know, we see the players that he brings into the club. You know, we see him now at PSG. You know, this is something I said two years ago, two and a half years ago, and I thought, pure madness. And now we're sitting there a few years later trying to get Podge to leave PSG to come to Manchester United. That's my point. That's what I'm going to say in the matter. Well, the latest on Pochettino, just to give you the latest and everyone else, Paul, is that uh, it's moving fast. He's got a game in Manchester tomorrow night against Man City. Um, He's open to the job. I mean, look, I wanted to ask you about that yourself just to get your opinion on it. But apparently uh, reports from France are saying that um, PSG feel they've got a replacement in place if Pochettino says he wants to leave. Obviously, you've been a manager yourself. I don't think PSG are going to make the manager say he wants to go because there'll be some sort of release for them there but it's 10 million they'll get from United apparently that's the price to get the manager out of his contract Pochettino apparently wants the job not happy at PSG because they've got directors of football who basically want you know they'll go and get messy and you get it's one of them clubs where you get given players you don't have the say over the players you get he wants the Premier League he wants Manchester United and uh, United have got this opportunity to go and get him quicker than this whole I mean I don't know what's your thoughts on this Bloody Carrick's. So you sack the manager, you keep the same coaching staff. We heard from Carrick yesterday. I, I'm here for, I'm having a great time. I'll be here as long as they want me. But then United are saying we want an interim and then another manager in the summer. That's not, in my opinion, a very good idea. I think go and get Pochettino now. What are your thoughts on that? Well, listen, I think first and foremost, I think, um, you know, once you sack them, obviously with the games coming up, they've got Villarreal um, this evening, or this afternoon, and they've got a big game against Chelsea. So, you know, someone has to take charge of that team. That goes without saying. Whether you put them under the interim manager or whatever title, you know, having an interim manager at the end of the season um, doesn't stock up for me. It, and, and, and can't do because what you might find yourself in a situation is, is exactly the same situation they found themselves in with Oli for years ago. Because if that manager, whether it's Bruce, Mark Hughes, whoever it may be, Lauren Blanc, if they come in and start doing well and start winning games and all, all of a sudden, we know what's going to happen. The fans are going to go, yeah, great, sign him up, sign him up, he's their man. He puts pressure on the board. Next minute, they sign him up, it goes tits up, they have to pay another fucking seven and a half million pound compensation and then we're back to square one. So, you know, the fact that I'm hoping this process with uh, 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 Pochettino, I think it's going to happen pretty quickly. I think, you know, I think we shouldn't get too hit up about the interim manager because I don't think it's going to last that long. Um, if, if Pochettino wants to go, I presume ZD will then will go into PSG. Um, Pochettino still got family living in London, so you know it, I think this could be a speedy, speedy process. So um, I'm not not really concerned about at this moment of time. If Pochettino doesn't go, and then we're talking about an interim manager, it's a hard one. Do you wait? Do you wait for Pochettino to come at the end of the season? 
if PSG were to win the Champions League final, would PSG not let, not let him go? You know, all these type of stuff can happen. So I think mate, not have to make this happen, and I mean happen before the Chelsea game. I think it's imperative they, they do that. Um, it's just a weird one. I was a bit concerned because well, obviously Oli's left, and obviously when Oli left, you know, someone has to take over from the staff. I was a bit concerned why Michael Phelan didn't take over. You know, we're talking someone who's apparently it was a, apparently they wanted him, but it was um, media back. They, they were scared of a fan backlash of appointing him, so they went with Carrick, who's more liked. But, but, but this football's not about being liked. Football's about fucking being winners, you know. And and the, the backlash. We're talking about someone who's been manager at Hull, you know, who's worked under Steve Bruce, you know, his experience. We're talking one or two games. We're not talking to the end of the season. Um, so to have to worry about the backlash, you know, of... Um... Makes no difference to me. I mean, I, I don't think feeling's any worse than Carrick. I'm, I'm disgusted that Carrick's in charge. I mean, I personally think that I agree with you that, you know, a manager goes, you end up with the interims. But most of the time, those interims are just as responsible as the manager that's gone. It's just you know, they need someone to coach the team, don't they? Yeah, of course, of course they do. But for this period of time, you know, put Mickey Flynn in there. You know, he's experienced, you know, so to manage. Well, he's partly managed before. So to kind of override that because, oh, the fans won't be happy or, or you know, it's about a likability. This, this is the problem we have, you know, you know we, 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 we're soft. We're getting too soft. It's about, oh, we can't do that. The fans don't like this. So, you know, it's not about that. It's about getting the right people in and getting the right results. Not, you know, and that's all, that's all that matters to fans is winning football games and playing football. You know, not about, oh, well, we can't appoint Mickey Fielding because, you know, the likability factor. And, you know, Carrick's the, Carrick's the same problem. Sometimes it, it can work differently, you know. And it, sometimes you have a number two like Carrick who, who has different ideas to what the manager does. And when he gets that position, you know, as he said yesterday, oh, I've got good, I've got good ideas, I, you know, I'll do it my way and all that type of stuff, which, which you get, you know, you know, from number twos. So all of a sudden, you know, it's like, well, did Carrot actually get what Ollie was doing? And I hate, I hate it. It fucking winds me up when they, like number two comes in and goes, well, yeah, I'm, I'm in the hot position now. I'm in the pole position. I'm going to do it my way. I've got some ideas, X, Y, and Z. Why are those ideas then taken into Ollie? You know, meanwhile, Ollie's doing an interview, crying about Michael Carrot, as you, you know what I mean? And Carrot's fucking saying, no, I'll do it my way. What is going on? What is going well, on? What do you think about that, actually? Because we've got this match early evening tonight. A lot of people are saying he's got to pick Donny, he's got to pick Jesse, he's got to pick this, he's got to pick that. Carrick himself said in the interview yesterday, you know, um, I worked closely with Ollie for three years. We've got the same beliefs. What would, you, what would you have more respect for Carrick for? Because if he sticks with the same way that Ollie played, that's obviously the plan. If he goes and picks Donny and everyone, he's, he's obviously doing it because I'm Carrick and I'm... I'm different, which is like, well, why weren't you different before then? Yeah, exactly. Because, and, the, and, and this is the problem, the amount of time is that when things went bad for United or the op op opposing team scored, you'd zoom over to Carrick and Ollie, and Ollie would be talking and Carrick just be going, yeah, yeah. That's what it would be. Or they'd look at the screen and go, what happened now? You know, so, you know, sometimes as a number two, you kind of got the tendency to, to agree with what the manager says. You know, I'm not sure how much input Carrick had at at um, <clears throat> um, uh, how much Carrick's got to say. We're not on these there. Sometimes the number two don't say anything; just agrees with the manager. But his point is to have an input. Mickey Fillion's point is to have an input. You know, McKenna's point is to have an input. You know, but if he's got the same beliefs, then you expect the same type of team to be playing this, this afternoon. You know, if I'm being totally honest, that's what you expect. He might. Yeah. Carrick's not going to get the job. So whatever happens Carrick does, he ain't going to get the job. You know, so he, he's got to go out there and thinking, right, I'm going to pick the team that I believe that's going to go and win it. And, and if that means dropping two or three players, <clears throat> then, that, then that's what you do. You know, no one's going to judge Michael Carrick on what happens tonight and what happens against Chelsea. No one. Because you know he knows he ain't getting the job. So Carrick's just got to be brave and say, listen, enjoy this moment, you know, I never envisioned that I'd be sitting in the back to Ollie, Ollie three years ago, which he spoke about. You know, it's that, you know, you could put anyone in that position, just go out because all you're going to do is say, look, relax. You know, you, the pressure's off a little bit for a couple of games. Just go out there and have a bounce on the trampoline and let's see if we can bounce some results. Oh, well, in, 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 a, in a way, I'd, 
and and you see it so many times with teams when managers get, you know, we saw it, you know, with Aston Villa week, you know, we saw it with Dean Smith against Norwich, you know, it was, it's just like a kind of the players seem to kind of bounce back, and all of a sudden they started running around, and they want to start and press the manager, and you know, you know, and I hope we don't, in a perverse type of way, I hope we don't see that today, because the players are cheating themselves. Because what we saw on Saturday was absolutely diabolical, you know. And if you see a team tonight running around and busting the gut and, you know, playing the way they should be playing, then that means you think, so hang on, how can you do that on a Tuesday, but then on a Saturday perform like that? You're cheating yourself, you're conning yourselves, and you're conning the, you're conning the fans. You know, and, Matt, and I said to you before, time and time again, Mate United, to be at Mate United, you have to perform week in and week out. Yeah, you're not going to be great every game. You know, but you've got to show that you want you, you want to pull on that red shirt. You deserve to be in that red shirt. You know, they ain't been doing that. So if I see that tonight, this afternoon, I, I'll be livid because they've been cheating the manager and cheating themselves. And, um, you know, listen, it's important, it's important that we get results. It's not an easy place to go to with a And if Pochettino is coming in, it'd be nice for him to come in knowing that he's still got a chance of winning the Champions League. Well, I've just got um, there's some breaking news here, Paul. I mean, there's a lot of people in the chat telling me to read a certain person's tweet from five minutes ago. If you turned into the show 15 minutes ago, I said it 10 minutes before he's tweeted it. So I don't know why he's getting the exclusive. But Manchester Evening News are saying that PSG are understood to to be demanding 10 million in compensation for Pochettino, who wants to join Man United straight away. That's a tweet from Manchester Evening News five minutes ago. It's like an echo. We spoke about this 10 minutes ago, but I can bring it in for those people who are uh, yeah, slow, slow sports news with uh, Manchester Evening News. But PSG are understood to be demanding ten million in compensation. Pochettino, who wants Man United's job straight, that wants Man United job straight away. He clearly wants that job, Paul, because yesterday you've got good journalists saying he wants the job. Um, that's quite a big thing, isn't it? When you're a PSG manager with Mbappe, you're ten points clear of the top with Messi. You've got Champions League. And he wants that Man United job. He's clearly leaking it out. You've been a manager yourself. You know, he's putting that out there, isn't he, to let United know. Like Conte did a few weeks ago. We now know the price. Um, 10 million. It, you know, that's less than Dan James cost a couple of years ago. You know, you, you've got to go and do it, haven't you? I mean, it's, it's just the money side of things. But it's, but it's good that the fans know that a good manager wants the job. The price is there. Over to the board. And if they mess it up, well, we know they've done that before. Listen, the, listen, the ball kind of messed. But the ball kind of fall to mess this one. This next one is 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 a massive one for the United because we're not just talking about short term. You know, we're talking about long term. You know, and um, as I said, you know, under Oli, no disrespect. You know, he, he's <laughs> his plan was, you know, what I mean, was to have a a young, vibrant group. Group, you know, average age of twenty five, twenty six. Yeah, uh, his plan. Demi Simon Ronaldo, Cavani's over his thirties, Ronaldo, Varane. So I think that scene went out the window because it's based on desperation getting results. Um, so, but Pochettino's shown what he can do at Tottenham. Yeah, and people are going to say, yeah, he's not won anything, but you know, nor did Oli. Um, you know, we're giving Pochettino a chance and have all the finances he wants. I always had a thing with Pochettino. I wasn't too sure whether he could deal with the big egos. I think at Tottenham, you know, he had quite a relatively quite young side, a young Daddy Alley, a young son, uh, Kane, you know, so there was no really major, major big stars that were an issue. Um, and that's something, you, you know, as I mentioned, like I mentioned, you've got to be able to deal with. It's something you've got to come in and deal with these, um, you know, with, the, with these type of egos that he's going to come in. And the size the of the club as well. And the size of the club. You know, it's the biggest club in the world. But people don't understand. People don't, unless you play for Bank United, you know, or walk into that Carrington training ground or walk into that stadium with those fans in, you will never understand what it's like to manage or play for Manchester United. That's um, like you've said before, it's a Uni- are you a United player? No one else says that, do you? No. No one, no one else gets that. You know, and, and unfortunately at the moment, we've got four or five or six who aren't United players. Um, so it's not about the £10 million clause that the club are going to buy to pay for a PSG for him to come to Manchester United. It's what play- people say to me, and... <sighs> Yeah, we've got a great team, you know. And the team that we've got now should be good enough to compete with Liverpool's, City's, Chelsea's. You said at the start of it, we're still miles away from it. We're still miles away from it. You know, and, and, and you know, if you were to run for the team now, you'd think, well, we've got a... Wan Bissaka, who's, you know, basically out of confidence, not developed since he's been here. You know, I said to you about Luke Shaw, as soon as you come up against Manchester City, you won't play for England, but he'll play the next game. 
which he did. Maguire's, I mean, Maguire's at the moment, you know, I don't know where his head's at, you know. Lindelof, you know, doesn't play for hands back in the side. We've all said about the midfield, with McTominay, Fred. Matic was, Matic was 10 times worse as Fred on Saturday. He was, you know, yeah, you're right, you're right. Let's call it out when it's true. Matic was absolutely 10 times worse than Fred. You know, so that midfield needs to be a whole, you know, built again. You know, Pogba will probably go unless Poch can start get him to stay. You know, Ronaldo's 36. You know, Cavani's always injured. You know, so analyse the team. You think, well, hang on, we're miles away from the well-oiled machines of City, Liverpool and Chelsea. Miles away. So... We're talking Pochettino coming and having to spend probably another, what, three, four hundred million pounds? Because it's okay saying, well, he can get the best out of these players. If they're not actually Mate United players, and they're nowhere near the level of the players that... Well, they're, 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 they're also, they're, I mean, I, I was going to ask you this anyway, so I'll just ask it you now. They're also, um, you know, to look at the squad and say, oh, that's a squad capable of winning. It's not fair on a new manager, is it? Because it's not, it's not, right. his, you know, it's not his 400 million. He might go, I'd never, I want to spend 20p on Maguire, let alone 80 million. I'm not having that as I should win the league. He's got to have his own players. He, he might fancy, he might not fancy bloody Rashford on the left. I mean, even though the club will be telling you you've got to pick him, you know, he, he might fancy somebody else. And 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 it is, it is another rebuild. And I think fans, if we do get Pochettino, what's your expectation for United, you know, over the, is, is it another three-year rebuild? Because for me, yeah. I, I'm quite, I'm comfortable with that because that's the mess that's been left behind. That's not what Podgers, that's not the new manager's problem, is it? No, no, you're absolutely spot on. You're absolutely spot on. And and, then, and this is the thing. I think, listen, the mate night fans, the knowledgeable football fans, majority of them, they really are. And they're, and they're loyal, you know, and it's very rarely that you see mate night fans boo their players off, boo their managers off. You know what I mean? They are loyal fans. Um, and... I think they'll understand that, yes, under Mourinho, we won a couple of trophies. Yes, the environment wasn't as toxic. Yes, Oli came in and changed the environment. Yes, we finished second, you know, when we was under a pandemic with no fans, you know, and people looked at it as a, pro- a progress, you know. Having no fans at Old Trafford, you know, it's probably easy to play for these mate night players and having fans at Old Trafford. You know, Sheffield United went down from the Premier League because they had no fans. So... When you talk about progress, because we finished second, it was a strange season. We understand it, you know. This season, we've gone back the other way. So actually, did we really make any progress? Was it because of the pandemic that we made progress? I don't know. But looking at this team now, with a so-called better team and spent another £400 million, we've not made any progress. So how can you say we've made progress, but then spend £400 million and then go back the other way? It doesn't make sense to me. And I think the fans will understand that, listen... We just want Mate United to play the way they play. Are we saying that because of what happened, how we played years ago? Can we get back to that? You know, can we get back to the way Mate United play? Pochettino, can Pochettino do that? And if he does that, what players has he required to do that? And if, if again, it's another rebuilding system. And I think the Mate United fans will understand that. They don't, they don't want a quick fix. You can't do anything by a quick fix. And it's funny because just going off this a little bit, Tottenham played um, the top Leeds uh, the weekend. Top of fans are booing at half time. And I'm thinking, what are you doing? I didn't know that, bloody hell. Yeah, you've got Conte, who's got his first home game. It's not his team. He's been he's been for the ball for the door for two seconds, and you're booing at half time. But this is why um, you've just mentioned it there. This is why, you know, obviously I've been Ollie out for a few weeks now, and some yeah. of our viewers are like, oh, there'll be fans at the ground singing Ollie's at the wheel. And I said, let them, because actually, that's. That's what they, they're home and away fans. They sang for David Moyes. But what that means is we won't do stupid things like Pochettino's first game if we're losing to Arsenal half time. They ain't going to start booing him, are they? Because, and, that, and that's that's the thing, you know, you need those fans that are supportive of the team. You, you, you played for United and it might frustrate people because they're like, oh, you know, they need to be singing about for Ollie. But the positive of that is that they'll always give the team a chance and they'll always get behind the team because that's ridiculous at half time to be bloody booing a team that's under a new manager. And this is going to take time under a new manager. Exactly. And it's, and it's got to take time. And these fans have to understand it will take time. You know, Pochettino might come in and you might see a difference in how he wants to play and, and, and the personnel that he plays with. And listen, mate, you know, it's mate, you know, we've got good players. You know, we've got good players and it's about changing their mindsets. But I mean, Tuchel's come into Chelsea and done it in, in yeah. a period of time. Yeah, he spent money, but he's gone in there and he says, listen, I'm the boss. 
Now, you do as I do, and if you don't, you're not going to play. All right? Positano's got to do exactly the same. And Chelsea look like, within six months there, just unbelievable. Unbelievable team. Now, listen, I'm not saying Pochettino can't come and do that, but what I'm saying, it's going to take longer than we expected, you know, And um, but I think he's definitely the right man for the job. I hate using that word, right man for the job, because you never know if he's the right man to the job until he's in the job. Would he uh, be your number one? I know I know. three years ago you said that, but would, would you know, if you could, within reason, because, you know, I, you can't get everyone, but is Poch the one you would, if I said to you, look, Zidane, Pochettino, Brendan Rodgers, Ten Hag, you know, I mean, to be fair, Zidane doesn't want it, does he? So that's a, that's a big thing. Well, listen, Zidane never wanted it. And if Zidane wanted it, wanted it, then why he's not been working? He would have learned bloody English. Yeah. That, that's what he would have done. You know, so he was never he was never coming to Manchester United. I like, Ten, I like Ten Hag. I like the way he plays football. You know, I think he would have been one. But I've met Mitchell a few times and just speaking to him, his mannerisms and, you know, he comes across really, a really, really nice guy. Not that nice guys win anything, but he knows what he wants. You know, his management management skills, I think, would be great. That's the most important thing, man, management skills. Well, he's a coach, isn't he? Because, you know, yeah. Oli said, I'm not a coach. Pochettino's mm. going to be a coach as well as a manager. He's going to be on the training ground setting the team up how he wants to, it to play on Saturday, isn't he, with his coaching team? Yeah, listen, of course, of course he will. And listen, I mean, you have to be you have to be on the training ground. Not say so you have to be in the training ground all the time. Alex Ferguson wasn't, wasn't a coach, you know, but we had someone like Brian Kidd or Archie Knox who made sure they were top, top coaches. You know, Alex Ferguson was more of a man management and that was probably how it was back in the day. You know, that's how people were. You know, you have to coach on the training ground. You can't coach on the, not coach on the training ground. And I believe that Ollie never took any coaching sessions. You know, it was down to Carrick and McKenna. Um, so nowadays, these clubs want people, what coaches you can go and coach on, 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 the, on, the tra- on the training pitch. And we've seen, you know, the fact that Ollie's not been doing any coaching and we've seen the way they defend. We can see the goals that they've scored, 15 in about six games, I think. You know, <laughs> and we've seen David De Gea going, well, we don't know what to do when we're on the ball. We don't know how to defend. And I'm thinking... Hang about this is making you know, what, what and I've always said, said this to you, Mark. What are they doing in the training ground? I want to go and see what they're doing in the training ground because every time it goes ticks up, then we all do. Let's get yeah. a bloody big, we'll, we'll get we'll, they'll sell 75,000 tickets. You know, Man United, <laughs> there's, a, there's a money spinner here. Come and watch United train because you'll sell it out every week. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'd love to watch. Yeah, he's got enough players coming on TV after. I'm I think they're playing bloody Wembley or whatever they used to call it when you was a kid. Remember that? that, that they play Wembley, you know, and 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 uh, keepy ups and uh, you know, first cone and back, second cone and back, ten laps of the pitch. Then we'll have a match. Yeah, but that's what I was saying. That that's probably you know that it doesn't matter what what they do. But if they can't defend and and they don't know what to do when they're on the ball, when they're off the ball, then that kind of answers the question: What the hell are they doing then? It really, really does. And, you know, has it been this soft, soft approach? Is it, is it a soft, soft... Are we becoming a soft club? You know, that's, you know what I mean? Are we becoming a team where we're just nicey, nicey? You know, we saw the first goal go in. I mean, and you just see the reaction from the players. There was no... No one got onto anyone. No one said anything. No one berated anybody. You know... They're all too... They're all, they're all too... I mean... Too you, nice. you, you, you knew, you'd know them more than me. But it's very clear... I mean, look, it's football. You get paid a lot of money to be a good footballer. You get to play for Manchester United if you're really good and you get to win trophies if you're really good. But ultimately, it's football. And well, you it's like... Get, look, paid, get paid for United if you're bang average and all at the moment. This is the problem. Oh, yeah. But it's um, it's like anywhere, isn't it? If you want to be successful, being... I mean, I've done jobs. You've, you've played at the highest level. You mm. can't go into work every day and just be, all right, mate. How you doing, mate? Oh, don't worry about it, mate. Yeah, it's fine, mate. And that's the coaches with the players. And, you know, mm. Ollie gets sacked. You've got Harry Maguire and Carrick in the interview yesterday. And, like, I mean, ultimately, the head, like, the, the, the question should not be, oh, isn't, is it sad that Ollie's got the sack? Oh, yeah, he's such a nice guy. He's a genuine guy. He's loyal. He's humble. He came in. He did a video, this, that, and the other. It should be. Four points from twenty-one. You're playing absolutely dreadful. What 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 are you going to do to sort this out? You know, but it's not. They're all they're all too bloody pally, aren't they? I mean, you know, it's horrible to see Ollie crying at the weekend. But it, you know, the fact that he was crying, he obviously came as a shock to him. And it's like you just took four points from twenty-one, mate. But I think they go into work and everyone gets on with everyone, and they think that's going to make them successful. You need yeah. someone to kick you up the arse on the pitch, off the pitch, on the board. Of course, you, of course you do. And, and, and as you said, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, what are they doing in training? Is it all nice and nice? Is it laughter? Because 
as a manager, when you've come from a place under Mourinho where there's been no fun, there's been no laughter, you know, you, you don't want to go into training. And all these turned to all these, he's turned that around and they've gone in, they've been probably playing five of sides. I know it worked as a manager because I've done the same. You know, they play five of sides, all of a sudden everyone's laughing, oh, it's great here, it's all it's like a happy camp. And, you know, but, but that can only last so long. Eventually, you've got to knuckle down. You know, people talk about Conte, you know, when he was at Chelsea, we did like these training methods because we were doing double training sessions and we worked so hard and he won the title, mate. He did the same at Inter Milan. You know, Tottenham players are coming out so we've never worked so hard in our lives because that's what it's take. I don't think that's happening at Manchester United. You know, I, I don't think they're working hard at all. You know, well, that's and, coming. You always get that with a new manager, and that's coming in three weeks when we get, if hopefully, get Poch. We're, that's all going to come out from the players. Oh, we've, we've never trained so hard because they yeah. haven't been worked, have they? No, they haven't, they haven't been worked, and you can see it they haven't been worked. You know, they haven't the demands obviously on the training ground haven't been set because they're doing exactly what they're doing on the, on, the, on the football pitch on the Saturday. You know, and just going back to you know, it's sad that Ollie's gone and all that. Like, you know, it's, I, I don't think it's sad at all. As I said, I, I, you don't see anybody get, lose their job. Anyone, any fan who works, you know, has got to put food on the table. You don't see anyone lose their job. But this is someone, who, you know, no disrespect, who's been there at the biggest club in the world for three years. This is someone who's just got a big, massive payoff. I, I, I'm not going to feel sad about something like that. Yeah, he he's had he's had he had his chance, didn't he? he had more than his chance, so you can't complain. I was, I was at Blackburn, you know, and it's kind of similar because when I, I went from Macclesfield to MK Dons, got promoted to MK Dons, and I went straight to Blackburn in the Premier League. Um, and it was kind of similar to, to it. I, I never had the budget to, to what Ollie's had. You know what I mean? And I lost my job after five months. Did I feel sad for myself? No, I was gutted. Did I look back and say maybe it was a bit too early for me? Yeah, it was. Maybe I wasn't ready, you know, to go straight to the Premier League after two, two, two years. You know what I mean? It, it, as a manager, it was, it was. The players were different. You know, the profile of the players, the way they acted, a lot more fragile, a lot more softer. You know what I mean? Always wanted a pattern on the back. Um, but you learn that, you know. But you know, at, at the end of it, I lasted four or five months at Blackburn. But it was a learning curve for me. You know, I thought, yeah, well, that's me done. But I'm, I'm not going to do an interview after saying, oh, I'm so sorry, you know. You know that, that, if I was going to do an interview about Blackburn, then it'd be like two, three months later to say, well, this is what happened. This is why we didn't do this. This is why we didn't do that. Um, so, and this was the same as Ollie. Was this going from Cardiff to Mull to make night is a big, big leap. Mm. Big leap, all right? But at least he's had three years at it where he's bought the players that he's wanted. He spent £500 million. Pounds. This was his team. This was his team. This wasn't, as you said, with... Uh, Pochettino, where you know PSG are saying, "No, you've got to have him. You've got to have him for marketing purposes." This was his team, and and from day one, from not playing Donny Van der Beek, to all of a sudden deciding against Watford that Sancho plays on the right wing and not on the left wing. <laughs> you know, all, you know all these kind of things. Fred McTominay playing all the time, playing Matic, never addressed that centre midfield position. Hasn't done that for two years. Never addressed it. You know, um, so. To say I feel sad, it, it, it's probably not the right word. I, I, I think he's he's been very, very fortunate, you know, you, you know, to have this club, big, massive club for three years and have a crack at it at, at such a early stage in his managerial career. Um, so I don't pick people keep telling me, oh, well, it's sad, he's such a nice bloke. You know, no one was fucking sad for me when I got sacked at Blackburn, you know. So, you know, and, and I'd love to manage, manage Manchester United, I never will. But don't people start telling me, oh, I feel sad for him when he's just walked off with £7 million payoff. You know, so that, that's my take on that. And Yeah, I think um, I think obviously the fact that he's played for the club, is it, it was a big part of that. Um, the, thing that the, but the, thing, the thing that sat with me is that if you sit and do, what, what you said there is really interesting, because you said, you know, if I'd been sat by Blackburn and they said, will you do an interview? I'd, you'd say, yeah, if I can tell, tell the bloody truth. And, you know, anyone who gets sacked, there's always going to be some reason, you know, and Ollie just sat there and basically was like, I've had a great time. I've met loads of friends. Um, I've loved my time here. I've been backed and now I've been sacked. And it's like, well, that there isn't the truth. You know, you might have wanted a midfielder in the summer and they said, no, you're not having what, you know, there's, there's all, you know, Mourinho's done a show. The thing is, I think it suited the club to have a manager leave and say, I've been backed and everything's great because what's Van Al done? 
at clubs like Disneyland. What's Mourinho done? They didn't give me what I want. What's Oli done? I've had everything I want. I've had a great time. It's like it's like the end of Bloody Bullseye. You know, is when he's going. Oh, I've had a great time out with the with the lads, and um, I'm I'm going home with me with my money and my, and my darts. And that you know, I do I do I like Oli. I think that I'll be a lot happier when his coaches have gone as well. And that's what I was going to ask you as well, Paul. <clears throat> um, the, we were talking just before we came on air about a few things, and there's a story. I don't. I've, I've not listened to it. There's a story that. I think Rio Ferdinand has said, you know, there needs to be a, a familiar face. Now, my stance is I don't want any familiar face. I want I want what Liverpool have got. I want what Man City have got. I want what Chelsea have got. Some manager and coaching team who's never played for the club before to come in and go, I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional. This is what we're going to do. I want a complete reset of the football club. Do you think it's important that the club still do keep people involved who, who, who know the club, who've been in the club? Specifically, I'm talking about people... You know, would you be keeping a Michael Carrick and a McKenna on the coaching staff or should Poch be allowed to say, I don't want any of them, I want my whole team in and this is how it's going to go? Yeah, it's, 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 that's always a, a tough one, you know, and you could probably kind of sense that when you look at Everton, you know, and the managers that they've had in the last three or four years and, you know, Duncan Ferguson's always, always has been part of the, that staff, you yeah. know. That's Good point, yeah. Doctor say he's not great at his job X, Y, and Z, but every manager that come in, Duncan Ferguson's been sat alongside him because um, he knows everything through and through. Um, but when you kind of look at where we are as a club, you know, um, and you're right, we did need, we need a whole new restart. We need to change <clears throat> everyone's perception of, of the club and where how we're going forward, how we're going to progress. Um, uh, uh, Poch want to bring his own people in. That goes without saying. Would I be adverse to keeping Michael Carrick? Probably not. You know, he's, he's one of those that can learn from Poch. You know, I think someone like him would learn from Poch. McKenna, I think for me, we'll have to go back to the 23s. If he wanted to, he might want to try his luck elsewhere. But I think with Michael Carrick, I think he'd be someone who would could learn a lot from Poch and maybe in future then go on and and get a job somewhere in the League One Championship and just go and apply his trade, you know. You know, I'd, I'd, like, to, I'd like to think, you know, I would give it all, Poch would give him a chance. Whoever came in as manager would give him a chance to, to do that. Uh, I think that's important. Uh, but apart from that, I think as a new manager, you've got your own ideas. Poch is just probably sitting there now thinking, right, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Whether the club say to him, by, by the way, Poch, you've, you can have the job, but you've got to keep Car McCarrick and McKenna. Um, I don't think the owner's in a position now to start telling Poch what he can do. You know, as Tottenham worked with Conte, this is my way, this is how we're going to do it, this is my staff. Yet, yeah, I'm happy to keep Carrick, I hope he keeps Carrick, um, but the rest, they, they have to go. And, that, and that's the only way we're going to go forward with this club, you know. The Glazers can't start dictating to Pochettino now. You know, where, where we are as a club and, you know, performance, yeah. we need a quick turnaround quickly. Um, um, so Poch is in the driving seat, fingers crossed. But I, I did, I'd love to see Michael Carrick there. I'd love to see his ideas. I'm interested to see what happens in the next couple of games um, that he's in charge. Um, um, but they're two tough games. You know, as, a, as an interim manager coming to two tough games, Villarreal and Chelsea, you know, and this is what I'm saying. We could have had this conversation after Liverpool. Yeah, right? yeah. should have done. When the Mate Night fans walked out at half-time, all right, that was the time. The shares, the shares probably went down for the Glazers. Um, that was the time because it's all based on shares for Glazers. When when Ronaldo come, went came here, the shares went up. They sold they sold some of their shares, made the right few quid. All right, as soon as they get beat by Liverpool, the shares go down. So if we'd been having this conversation two three weeks ago, Pochettino would have been in by now, and he would have been in for the Villarreal game, the Chelsea game, which are two massive games. Now we're going Watford, to... Watford game. We would have got three Watford. points. Yeah, and, but we sat and sat and waited. You know, that's the only thing, you know, we sat and sat and waited and it was all guessing games. He's going to go, he's got one more game, he's got two more games. And it's not nice for you that as a manager, because I've heard it myself. But they didn't act quick enough. And now we're in a situation now where we're trying to act with two massive games coming up. So, you know, it's, gonna be, it's tough on Carrick, but I'm sure he'll enjoy the experience. Um, but I think by the looks of it, Pochettino will, will be in, hopefully, for the Chelsea game. I think it's going to be a speedy, speedy process. Ten, what's 10 minutes to United? They just paid seven and a half minutes for Oli to go. You know, they give Oli a three-year contract. You know, it, it, it's decision-making from the board, Edward Wood, but the decision-making, you know, from them is dark because they're not football people. And I've always stated they're not football people. Yeah. yeah. You know, 
And, and I said from day one, yeah, give Ollie the job to the end of the season, then just see where the club is and then see who's available. And then you can have your pick from Ten Hag, Pochettino, people are about, have a little search, have a scout. But no, after the PSG game, they went, right, bang, fill your contract, that's it. Didn't think about it, stupidity. Uh, and three years down the line, unfortunately, he's lost his job. Uh, could have been so much avoided. So, um, listen, the quicker we get Pochettino in, and I think he's the man for us, I do, um, the quicker we can move forward. And But we've got to give him time. We got There's going to be still, after three years, we're still like, we've got to rebuild a team again. That's that's what I think. We've still got to rebuild the team again. We haven't really come forward, apart from what came in second, as I said last year. But you look at those players, you look at their attitude, you look at like, the way they're playing. And I, I've, I've, I've always hated it as a manager to think that my players would never play for me. Now, even when I got sacked at Blackburn, my players were still running around. What, what's that all about, actually? Because I was listening. I mean, I I actually agree with this. Like, you know, I heard Harry Maguire saying yesterday, you know, something along the lines of, um, um, you know, we, 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 we tried really hard, but we just couldn't get the, the results for the manager. So, it's not like with Mourinho where they probably down tools, they didn't like him. I mean, everyone knows that they liked Ollie. I mean, is that just not an indication of how bad the coaching is that the players do want to try for you, but it's just a bloody mess? Because the players have got to take responsibility, haven't they? But, you know, ultimately, yeah. I, don't think they, I don't think they weren't trying. It's just that they're, they're you know, it's like if you, if you played me at FIFA on PS5 now, I'd batter you because I'm better than you. That That's just, that, that, that that's just the way it is. Because I'm brilliant at it. Well, I've got PS5 PlayStation right next there, right there. Ooh. So. Maybe, 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 maybe there's a challenge there. Then maybe that wouldn't happen. That maybe that's a. But you know what I mean. If somebody's good at something <laughs> yeah. and something's bad at something, they'll beat them. And I think on Sunday, Saturday, Ranieri's a much better coach than Ollie, even though Ollie's got the better players. And 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 that's what I mean. People have a pop at the players who've got to take responsibility. But you were a player yourself, you know. If you you can be Paul Ince, England international, United midfield superstar in you know ninety four. If you went and played for some shit manager in the Championship, you might have an half decent game, but you ain't going to beat Man United, are you? Because you're going to be coached by a crap coach. You ain't got a bloody clue. No, but I'd, I'd so how do these players put in such bad performances when they're clearly liked the manager and liked the coaches? Because I think one, listen, I think. We have to be careful because we don't know whether there's certain people. The most important thing in, in a club is the changing room. All right? There's a changing room. So, and I said this before, you know, you'll, you'll have kind of fragmentations. You'll have a certain group over here, a certain group over there, and a certain group over there. Okay? When we was at Manchester United in 94, we were all together. We didn't actually go out with each other, but when we were in that changing room, it was about us. You know, it wasn't about a group over there having opinions about this. You know, opinions a group over there, having opinions about that. So you notice that every time something goes wrong, it's always Harry Maguire or David Gea or someone comes out and says it's never anybody, anybody else. You know, not much some Fernandez might maybe now and then. You know, this is a United team that's not organised. All right, it, that's that's the first and foremost. This is a United team that doesn't have a way of playing, doesn't have an identity. This is a United team that doesn't have a presence. This is a mate United team that are kind of mentally soft, weak. When they go a goal down or when things don't go their way, there's no, you know, there's no come up and get them. This, you know, this, we are mate United. We, this is what we should be doing with, you know, as I said, going back to that first, second goals against Watford, it was like the world ended. Even, even, at, even at the end of the game, I don't know if you saw it, fucking Fred stuck and sold in Lindroff. It's like cuddling, I'm thinking, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, and, and players, listen, players say well, we tried hard. This is not, listen, everyone tries hard. Everyone tries hard every day they wake up in the morning. Fans you work every day, they try hard. You know, these are these are world-class players. These are players who get paid a fortune, not just to try hard. You know what I mean? But to have the quality, it's not about trying hard, it's about having quality. And, and that's why I say, make not a player, you've got to have quality. You've got to be the best. There is out there. So it's not about trying hard, you know, and, and this is why I don't get it. You know, Ollie said after the show, after the show yeah, well, we've got a great staff and, and my players are trying their best. But if that's their best, then we are in trouble because it ain't the best. And to play for mate United, you have to be, be the best or try to be the best, not try hard. 
I would always try whether I was, even when I was 36, playing in the Premier League for Wolves against Liverpool, against Steven Gerrard, all right? Even when I played against Mate United for Roy Keane, I tried my best. I, I tried to be the best that, that I could. I didn't try hard, because I always try. It's a natural requirement. So I was trying hard and, you know, we did our best. You're not doing your best because we're not seeing you doing your best. And yeah, Ollie's and the staff have got to blame for that because it's what you do in training that you replicate on the Saturday. And if people are getting away with things on training that they don't run back or Matic loses a head out and then lets Dennis run off him and just thinks, oh, sorry, I can't be asked. You know, that's just what they're doing in training and they let them get away with it. And this is the results that you get if you don't train and do the right thing in, in, in training a week before a game. And when you look at players just jogging back and thinking, ah, it's not my day again, here we go again. There's a problem. There's a problem. OK? And that looks to me that they're not trying for the, for the manager. They're not playing for the manager. You know, Matic on Saturday looked like, well, I can't be out. So, I'm, you know, I'm only playing because Fred's been on international duty. So, you know, I should be playing every week. And that's what some players are like. And you yeah. saw his performance was diabolical. Linderoff, just letting people shoot. You know, David Gaius had to cut a penalty twice. Yeah, I get that. But two of the goals were down to him. You know, these are Man United players. You know, Maguire, stupid thing, two bookings in seven, seven minutes. Now, this is not about so, uh, trying hard. That's not trying hard. It's, it's pure, pure madness. It's actually a facade, to be fair, to try and cover up that, that actually doing fuck all in training. That's what it so is. What, so what's going to happen next, Paul? Because the fans will be like, look, Ollie's gone. We don't think Carrick and that lot's going to be here for much longer. Pochettino looks like he could be coming in, hopefully. He's going to inherit these problems. Are some of these players, you know, we saw Harry Maguire last week with his fingers in his ears because he scored against Albania and Kino's calling him out as a disgrace. He's the captain of the club. Um he's got a hard hand, he's got a hard job, hasn't he? Whoever comes in next. And it, it can it can it work just by coming in and there's a new guy in town and Harry Maguire becomes a United captain and the rest of the players become consistent and start playing good football? Or is it actually more trouble ahead and a long journey ahead for whoever comes in? No, listen, I think, you know, as I say, we're talking about a, a top, top class manager. I think, you know, as much as Poch has been at PSG, he'd have been watching what's going on at Old Trafford, you know, and I'm sure Poch would have been analysing games, <clears throat> you know, all the games this season in the Premier League while he's been managing at PSG. So he'll have a rough idea. He'll have a kind of plan, game plan for when he goes or if he goes in there. You know, as I said, it might be a case of, you know, having to go away for the last two months has been terrible. It's not played well. Forget about Albania and teams like that. They're Mickey Mouse teams. You know, maybe it might be a case of, you know, Harry, listen, if it was me, I'd say, Harry, listen, I just want you to concentrate on your football I'm going to take the armband off you, OK? And I'm going to give it to, whether it's Varane or, <clears throat> excuse me, or Ronaldo. You know what I mean? I just want you to concentrate on getting you back to your best performances, you know, because that's what you need to be at, because at the moment you're not there. Do you not think that'd be dangerous, though? Because if someone took you, the, if you, you know, when you were captain, if someone said, Paul, look, I'm taking the captaincy off you because I want you to focus on you, you might go, fuck off. You think I'm not good enough, you know? So, you know, because that's ultimately, it's a nice way of saying you're not good enough, isn't but, but, it? But at the moment, he's not good enough, is he? No, that's what, that's what I mean. Do you think you just take it off him because he's just not the United captain? But the thing is, when when you're captain, and this is <laughs> when you're captain, you always think the reason why a manager makes you a captain is because you've been in this side <clears throat> week in and week out. So you've got to play. You, you think as a captain, I'm I'm going to play every week because I'm the captain of the teams, so I have to play. But if I'm not performing well, okay, then then it's like, well, can't really take my captain out because he's my captain, or just say, right, Paul, I'm going to take you out for a couple of games because you're not playing well, or I'm going to take the captaincy so you can focus just on playing football rather than you know trying to organize everything else i want to focus on you and start playing the way you should be playing or i'm just going to take you out and try to ram lindroff you know because Maguire is not playing well at this moment listen there's a lot of players not playing well but Maguire is your captain he's the leader he's the one you look to you know whether he's vocal or not he's your captain he's cost 80 90 million pounds at the moment he's not playing like that and he's and, and that doesn't help that he's playing in defense that that's just as bad mm. But he's your leader. So somewhere down the line, if I was going into United, I'd say, listen, Harry, you know, I'm going to take the camp show for you. I want to just let you focus on your football, get yourself right, get your performances back. Then you, you can have it back. So it's not an issue. You know, you either don't play or your player's not captain. I've seen it happen before, you know, because he's not playing well. He's not quite right, you know. And um, that's something that probably never have to deal with when he gets there. But 
he will lift the players. As I say, I presume the coaching would be di completely different. You know, the belief's gone out of Manchester United. The confidence has gone out of Manchester United. We've always been have the match winners, like we saw with Ronaldo in the Champions League. We've always had people who can do special things. Now he's got to make sure that he can come in and make sure all these players, all this talent that we've got, can come together, you know, and know what they're doing, know what to do in possession, know what to do out of possession, when the ball's this side, when the ball's that side, and demand from them because, you know, the likes of Simeone and Klopp and Pep and Tuchel, they demand and just, you know, berating on the sidelines, you know, we don't do that at United. We just sit there and go, oh, what happened there? Oh, how did that happen? Oh, let's look at the camera. Oh, yeah, 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 lucky boys. And I'm thinking, this is not Mate United. You know, so we're, we're hanging on to what Mate United was, was before. We've always said this for the last six, seven years. You know, we need to get back to the Mate United that we were before. That's gone now. You know, that's, that's tough because in 93, 94, which I think was the best team we ever had anyway, um, you had leaders, you had characters. It wasn't about just players who tried hard or worked hard. We were the best of our, of our trade. That's why we was dominating the 90s, because every player that played for United was the best at their trade. Every other team out in, a, in, in Europe would want our players. Every fucking team would want our players now. You know, so let's forget about what we do, did then. Let's think, imagine who's going to come in now and get us to what we need to do to compete with these big boys for the next five or six or seven, eight, nine years. That's where we need to get. And I think... You know, Pochettino's as good as manager. I, I think there's out there where we can get. Yeah, I agree. And I, I, I actually, just to add to that, I actually would warn the fans that I think we might be going. Hopefully not, but I think we might go into a more toxic environment because of the situation Carrick and Ollie and Phelan have created. And I don't think they've done it on purpose, but I think they've created this, you know, friends culture. And the yeah. problem with the friends culture is that I've worked under a boss that's, you know, a bit like David Brent. You know, he wants to be your mate. And then someone comes in who's like, I'll have a drink with you, but we're working between nine and five and we're going to get results. And yes. instantly you don't like them because they're like, well, they're not as fun as the old guy. You start bitching about them. And that's what I worry about. Not Poch. I worry about anyone coming mm. in because Ollie had his favourites. And, you know, some of those favourites weren't good enough. And if, if Pochettino or if someone comes in and goes, yeah, right, you're not playing. You're not good enough. You can sort yourself out. And he's... I oh, fucking don't like this new manager. This is not what it was like under Ali. And it, mm. it, if you have, you, I think you're absolutely right. If you haven't got the players with the right mentality, and a manager comes in with the right mentality, those players who haven't got the right mentality, who are quite powerful in the club, can yeah. suddenly make it very <laughs> difficult. And, and and I would just be careful of that. But I'm not worried about that, Paul, because I think the players have had a free ride because Solskjaer has been so bad. I think a lot <laughs> of fans now, if we bring a proper manager in and it doesn't work, they will start looking... That's a warning to the players, really. I think people will start yeah. to see the players as the problem if that happens. Yeah, listen, I think, listen, I think the players... I mean, it's, listen, I always believe... And it's, you know, once you cross that white line, it's down to the players. I always believe that. Listen, but I, I kind of... If you've got no instructions from the manager or game plan and what you're prepared to do, and you don't do enough work in it, then it'll always, it'll always fail. It'll always fail. Um, but ultimately, when... You know, Fernandez goes over to the fans and starts saying, it's not only, it's, it's, it's about the players, it's about the players. You know, you kind of think, what, what, what are you doing? What are, mm. are you doing? I can't remember the last time you had a good game yourself. You know, the, you know, the way I, if that was me, I'd have walked straight in the tunnel because I, I played that bad. And yet he's saying, well, it's not about Oli, it's about the players. The players. It's a combination of two. You know, that Oli, Oli was, or the next manager, is the leader of the ship. He steers the ship. You know, and you have to take that on board. And if you don't take it on board and you don't do what he says, then you're not going to play. And if you don't like that, then what you're going to do, you're going to go back into your little clicks, go back to your little mates and say, oh, I don't like this. You're spot on, Mark. I don't like the manager, X, Y and Z. But the manager has to do what's right for him. The manager has to go in there and make him happy, not make the players happy. You know, Conte didn't go there into Chelsea and go, right, let's just do five a size, let's play head tennis because I know the players will like it. Enough. No, we are doing double training sessions. To Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you don't like it, then you're not going to be part of my team. And there's going to be players, when Podge comes in, if he does come in, that won't like the way Podge is doing it, especially when I'm not playing. And they go back and say, you're right, I don't like the manager. This might be a player who's got another two, three left on his contract. Yeah, you know, This might be a player who, you know, come January, you know, might, we might have to sell. Or Podge will say, listen, this player's not capable of my demands. If you couldn't, if you couldn't do what Alex Ferguson said, or Brian Kidd or Archie Knox, if you couldn't actually 
do with their demands, live up to their demands, you won't be in the side. You won't play. And you knew that week in and week out. You knew that when you went into training Monday, you had to just train as hard as you play. Train as hard as you play. And we did that every, every day at United. I don't think they're doing that now. So if Poch comes and does that, and the players think, Jesus Christ, this was tough today. I'm not looking forward to tomorrow. They, ain't gonna be in, they won't be in the side and they won't be in the club. The ones who go, yeah, this is what we've been waiting for. This is what we need. You know, that's the mentality of that core mentality of those players. So, yeah, this is what we're going to do. You know, that's what he needs. And he can build on that core in the change room where they're all singing from the same hymn sheet. And they all know, you know, what they're doing. So the latest, everybody, this morning is that Pochettino does want the job. We spoke about this yesterday. He's desperate to come to Manchester United. PSG would let him go for 10 million <laughs> compensation and the ball is in United's court. Uh, Paul would go for Poch and he said he thinks he might be in for Chelsea. Um, I Just on that, I actually, I mentioned this yesterday, I'll ask you about that. I said yesterday, I think, I don't know whether it'll happen, but I said, you know, give Carrick this job, this this game tonight. Get to work on your manager this week. And if you appoint him on Saturday and Carrick still does the Chelsea game and the manager's in the stands, I actually think it would be good for Poch to start next Monday morning, do his first press, get the players Tuesday, Wednesday training, and then your first game is Arsenal at home. Old Trafford's rocking. Let's start it off there. I'll be quite happy with that because I think Chelsea might be a might be a bit of a push to get him in anyway to get him a training session. Well, let's, yeah, listen, listen, at the day, yeah, it, it will be a push, and I think you know, obviously, he's got to play Man City tomorrow, so um, you know, it will be tough for him. But listen, if they don't get him in before Saturday, then uh, you're right. They need to get him in at the training ground Monday morning, came into working with this team because they've got a lot of work to do. And just on the flip side, if they don't get him into the end of the season, and we are talking about an interim manager, and I've seen all the names come up, Brucey, yeah, or yeah. well, Phil Neville come up. Do I see Phil Neville's name come up or not? I bloody hope not. If it, if, if it did, it's like that. You know that thing at the fairground where you whack, whack the moles down? And then they keep popping around. Yeah, yeah, Steve <laughs> Bruce, whack. Phil Neville, whack. <laughs> But you know, if they did, I'd like to. If it, if it was out of any of them, I'd like to see Mark Hughes there. If, if I'm just going to put that out there, well, he's not really. Yeah, I, I no, wouldn't I, take any of them, but I know what you mean. I know what you mean. That, you know, we need someone who knows the club route again to the end of the season. Then, you know, I, I think Mark Hughes would be perfect for that role. You know, I I, I do. Well, he's, not, he's not really attached to... He's an ex-United player who knows what it's all about. I think, in fact, I think Hughes came through the youth system, didn't he? He was quite a young player at United first time, and then he went off to Spain and came back. So he'd know United, but he wouldn't be attached to it in this sort of bloody modern phenomenon, would he? Yeah, but if, listen, if, listen, he's, he's managed enough football clubs. He, know, he knows United because the start of this domination for United, he was the he's start. Right. He was yeah. there started. All these players after... You know, that's come from where we started it all off. You know, this team had it under the title for 26 years. You know, we knew it, we did it and we knew how to do it. And that was passed on from generation to eras to eras. So he knows what it takes. He knows the demands that it needs, you know. And people say, well, that was, that was years ago. Well, hang about. All we've heard now this year is that, oh, we need to get back to playing how we used to back in the day and all that type of stuff. So if you're going to have that type of manager, then I'd like to see Mark Hughes do it. I, I mean, wouldn't it be great if Roy King came in? How good would that be? <laughs> Never going to happen, though, because he don't he don't get on with Fergie, does he? So uh, that won't happen. It, Sir Alex will be on the board going, no, no chance, no chance. <laughs> I'd, I'd I tell you what, I'd, I'd I'd like to be in the dressing room to see Roy Keane walk in and see what he did. It'd be like, give us your phones. Well, why not? Yeah. Why, why not? And it's the same as what it takes. It's like um, Stevie G has gone straight to Aston Villa and said, right, there's no salt. You can't have salt. You can't have this. Because this is the way we're going to do it. Or no ketchup. What do you mean? No, if we're going to be a, a good side and you do my demands, you no salt, no ketchup. That's what he's done at, at, at Villa. So Roy King comes and says, no phone, bang, bang, bang. They, I think they need that type of shot, these players. I think they need to understand. And I don't think Roy King would be such a bad shout. Yeah, Fergie probably wouldn't agree to it. But for a short term, I thing, personally don't want anyone to do with United. I don't. I don't. But, but what else you do then? Who, what, what else you do then? Because we're going to no else. No other manager to come and force a short term fix up. Well, you could get someone like. Uh, well, no, it's very. That's why I don't want an interim because I think it's you're basically just killing your season, aren't you? You're like you're like you're like 
you're not going anywhere. And and even you know, even if in the best one in the world, you give it to Mark Hughes, you give it to Joachim Low, Ranick, who you know, Lauren Blanc, they'll come in, they'll have their own ideas, they'll set a bit of structure, and then in the summer it'll be like, cheers, mate, off you go, and then you start a new structure under a new manager. It only works if the interim. Like the, that Rangit guy were, would have been quite good because he's quite old if he came in and then went to be director of football and then someone came in below. That's the only way it would work. But that that's a fan theory. You know, that's common sense. As you said, you've got the Glazers and Ed Woodward in charge. They don't know nothing about football. So they're not going to do something clever like that. They'll just go, they'll probably just say, let's stick with Carrot. I mean, a lot of people talking about talk sport, to be honest, you just they're just repeating what we've been talking about for an hour that Pochettino's there for United to go and get. So... Yeah, he's that, got a match tomorrow night. Let's see what happens after that. Yeah, but I also think you know, if, say, if you get Pochettino in now, what we're in November, nearly December, Pochettino will have four months to assess this team. Yeah, yeah. you know, he'll have four months to assess it. If you get him in at the start, well, at the end of the season, he'll have six weeks before the back in pre-season. Well, so, it's a short. I said this last night as well. The World Cup's in Jan. Uh, sorry, in in December. No, but, the season the season starts. Really early this year, so players come back at the end of the start of July. Season starts August. You got a new manager's got four weeks to go in there and go. I need players. I need you out. Are you good enough? You've got, you, you've got to get your manager in now to give him yeah. this season to be ready for next. Yeah, give them, give them the next four months and let them assess the team. Let, let, let them know that the ones who are good enough, the ones who want to be there, the ones who want to play for the United, and then he can start setting his scouts out and finding his targets. So then come to start. Of, pre-season, he's got his team and players there. Then he's got six, seven weeks to work with them. That's what they should be doing. Do you think um, if Poch comes to uh, United, do you think uh, PSG will be looking looking at Oli? Sorry? <laughs> Why, oh, you... Your reaction was good enough. I thought, you know, just, yeah. I mean, I, I mean just, just a final word on that. I mean, it's over now. We we need to look forward, don't we? I mean, Ollie's got his money. He's had his chance. You know, I don't think he'll ever get a job anywhere near the Premier League again. Um, you know, you know how difficult that is after Blackburn. It's, yeah. it, you know, it's um, people just need to move on from Ollie and start looking forward. And I think the best way to do that is to clean house, get Poch in, give him his own man, men, give him his own money and, and, and see what happens. And if it doesn't work, and we're talking about this in a year's time, I think people need to realise in football is that, if you give someone time and they're not good enough, get them out and get someone else in. You know, it seems to be obsessed with a long-term plan. And this is where they went wrong with Ollie. It was all about long-term. But Tuchel came in in five months, Champions League, now the top of the league. Modern game, you can figure out if someone's good enough quickly. And then if they're not, you're better off shipping them out. But you know, they're obsessed with trying to get a man. Carragher said it yesterday. They're obsessed with trying to build something that Sir Alex Ferguson did. But Sir Alex Ferguson will go down as the greatest ever because he did something that just can't be done. Yeah. No, that's exactly right. And listen, I'm, I, do, I think sometimes it's a case of, you know, what what you've got at your disposal, what 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 club you type of club you're going into, what mess you're going into. Um, and I think at United, there's there's a mess. So before you can move forward, you've got to clear that mess out first. You know, um, and that's what Pochettino might have to find. And that's why we said just now, get him in now, find out who you want, find out what players you want. Yeah, listen, you're going to a team where. You're gonna to have to add four or five players next season to compete with these top 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 teams at the moment. All right. So two or three years, a Chelsea model. You get two or three years, if you don't win anything, bang, you're gone. Yeah. You know, Watford, if you lose five or six games, you change the manager, that's their model. You know, our model can't be about you're right, you know, longevity. Yeah, we don't like to sack managers, you know, I never have done. But that's only because Fergus was there for 20 odd years. We never, yeah. never had to sack a manager, you know. Now, we've not found the right manager in the last two, three, four, four managers now. We've not found the right one. Um, and we see where we are now after four managers, where we are as a team and where we are as a club. And it ain't, it ain't very good. Let me tell you that now. So let the manager come in. Let him clear out all the debris. Let him start again. You're right. Give him money that he needs. If you ever upset people, if sell them on, push them out of the club. Like Fergie did with me. Like Fergie did with Keeney. Like Fergie did with Mark Hughes, Konchelskis. At the club. New transition, we're going a different way. This is what he believes in. And Pochino's got to do exactly, exactly the same thing. And it might take a year, but you'll see signs. You'll see signs that, yeah, I like the way the way this club is going. I like the way the way we're playing. You'll see signs next season. You might see signs this season. Didn't see those, I haven't seen any signs all year that we Manchester United. I haven't seen them all year. From losing to Villa to Everton, never seen them. So, you know, fingers crossed, you're right. Ollie 
listen, I hope Oli gets another job. I really, really do. You know, he would have learnt from his experience at the biggest club in the world. I learnt from mine at Blackburn. Um, I'm on the other side now, but, you know, I hope Oli does learn from that and does get another job elsewhere and can start rebuilding his career again. Listen, it's, it's not been too bad, you know. I, don't, I, don't, I hate Oli to think that, you know, that he can never manage again because I think he, he can manage again. And I think the good managers always learn from their mistakes. And, you know, Oli, Oli will be back. Not sure what club he'll be back at, but... I hope he stays in management because ultimately, you know, you know, you want you want your people to do well. You want everyone to do well, whether it's managing or working. You want people to do well. Me, I do genuinely anyway. So I hope to see Ollie back in some capacity at some club. Yeah, and I think I think <laughs> Ollie's earns anything. Next club you go to, surround yourself with some experienced coaches because ultimately, Correct. I think that's what cost him his job. Yeah, they were his mates, but you need you need someone to be telling you and and coaching but, but, your team. Mark is his mates. It's not his just mates. It's his mates in the whole club. You know, yeah. direct, the technical director, Fletcher. You know, they, they, all, the whole club seems to be like a boys' boy, club shop for the boys. You know, mm-hmm. like the old boot room stuff. This is what something we need to look at. You know, the, the recruitment, which is fine if it's a good boot room, but it, it, mm. you know, incompetence <laughs> infects if it's not you know good and it and it was never any good. Yeah, and I think that's something the the, the you know the Glazers need to look at. You know, not just the manager, but the Glazers and all this. You're right, if the boot room's great and everyone's doing their jobs and X, Y, and Z, um, but they're not. You know, we've got Sancho, £75 million stuck on the bench. Donny Van Beek, you know, again, stuck on the bench, comes on and scores a goal. You know, just decision-making, you know, players, you know, you think they're not good enough to play for Manchester United. And this is what I'm saying. We need this, whoever comes in, we need to see players. I think, yeah, he's a mate United player. Yeah. You know, that's how I want to see it. And that means, that means changing the whole recruitment, everything else, because this is about winning and getting mate up to where they should be, you know. And you know we're not doing we're miles away from that at the moment. So if things have to change. So be it. So so be it. But yeah, listen. I wish, I wish Ollie all the best, like uh, anyone would, you know. Reset. Anyway, look, Paul. It's been great to have you on. It's flown by. Uh, yeah. Good, good old chat. And uh, obviously, there's a match tonight, which we'll be doing a watch along for. We'll see how that that goes, and then right. we'll see what happens after probably tomorrow night when PSG play Man City. I think that will be when it escalates if it's going to escalate but by the next time we talk we might be talking Pochettino full time well I'm thinking he's in Manchester to play obviously Manchester City after the game he then goes to speak to Edward Woodward signs then becomes United manager by Friday how's that sound that sounds very good (laughs) I'll I'll, I'll have some of that (laughs) all all right mate I've really enjoyed having you on love you son good to see you mate take care and you have a good day Bye. and um, I'll speak to you in a bit. Cheers, big man. Ta right. Ta bye bye. And uh, we will be back to, uh, we will be back anyway because we've got the, um, what do we got? What do we got? We got the, uh, we've got the watch along coming up uh, a little bit later. Um, I think we're live from like half four because it's a quarter to six kickoff. So yeah, we'll be live at about half four. Got the road trip coming up as well with uh, Adam sort of around two o'clock as well. So, and obviously, if anything happens around Pochettino, we will we'll go live. But I, I don't, I don't, I don't look. The latest with Pochettino is that uh, there's a price been set by PSG. Pochettino wants to come. We knew that yesterday, uh, and that's where we're at. I am wearing my Christmas jumper. Links in the video description. Worldwide shipping. That does say ho, ho, ho. Um, links in the video description. Uh, last week, if you want to get it worldwide, uh, I think next week's the last week for UK. If you want to get it for Christmas, links in the video description. Check that out. Uh, so make sure you smash a like on the video. Really enjoyed that chat with NC and uh, with you as well. And um, we'll speak to you in a little bit. Take care, uh, smash a like and subscribe.